What's up guys, this is Crypto with James talking to you today about Ethereum proof of work. As you'll be able to see from the title, I'm not a fan. I don't believe, um, and I'll, I'll explain why, I'll literally break down why I don't think this is a sound investment. Um, also, if you are um, a user of FTX or you are an XRP holder, there is some very, very interesting rumors circulating at the moment that you are going to want to know. This will affect you if you are a holder of anything on FTX or, or, I, or an XRP holder. So pay attention to this video. Before I get into it, if you're new to the channel, uh, you may be wondering who I am, why you should listen to me. So these, uh, there's obviously a lot of YouTube, crypto YouTubes out there. These are the first 26 coins that I spoke about on this channel. Uh, they're the first 26 coins I owned when I made this channel. Had you invested $100 into each of those coins when I released videos about them? Um, and you were still holding them. You'd done everything wrong um, as an investor. Never sold them, just held them down into a recession. You would still, having done everything wrong, be in profit for around 8.8k. Mm. However, if you just sold these coins last year when the markets were absolutely flying, you could have made 123k. Such a big difference. Now, obviously, I sold all these coins. Um, and if you want to see my current portfolio, go to uh, coffeemycrypto.com. Links in the description. On that site, I share my entire portfolio. I share every coin I buy. I share every coin I sell. Uh, we've set up tutorials for anyone that wants to get into crypto but feels like there's too big a barrier to entry. So you can go through them as well. The same ones I send to friends and family. And look, I've deep dived these markets for the last eight years. I've been, uh, I look through the fundamentals of all projects. And when I find one that I think can do significant gains, I get in on it. It's the same as I did with Phantom in 2020. I did one Udemy course ever where I said uh, Phantom would be the best investment of 2020. And it went up 677 times. If you'd put in two grand into Phantom when I released that Udemy course, you could have made 1.3 million. Now, I'm always looking for the next phantom. When I find it, I'm not going to do a Udemy course like last time. I'm simply going to go onto the site and tell the members. So if you want to find, get in early on one of the next big coins, go read the site, guys. Links in the description. Right. Ethereum proof of work. I am not, not, not a fan. Now, it's got a pretty significant market cap of around 400 million. Uh, when we actually take a look at what Ethereum... Proof of work actually did, you know, it did, when it launched, it was hundred, it peaked at about hundred and forty bucks, and has since obviously collapsed enormously, as one would expect. Now, <clears throat> there's a lot that isn't likable about this. First of all, look, Ethereum proof of work is the the original Ethereum blockchain powered by proof of work. That's not actually true. The original Ethereum blockchain that's powered by proof of work is Ethereum Classic. And look, builders are going to go and build on Ethereum Classic. They're not going to build on Ethereum Proof of Work. Um, Ethereum Classic has been around a lot longer, is a lot stronger a project, and has way, 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 way more security. Look, we can compare stats. This is Ethereum Proof of Work. This is currently the overall mining of Ethereum Proof of Work. Currently, there is a hash rate of 24.34 terahash. Now, obviously that's not awful, that's pretty good, but it is nothing, nothing compared to what Ethereum Classic have right now. 144 terahash. Ethereum Classic is as secure as you can get. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Ethereum Classic either, but people that want uh, to have built upon a proof-of-work blockchain, people that want to have that strong, stronger level of security, because that's what proof of work offers, is stronger security than proof of stake. But people that want that are gonna go to Ethereum Classic, or arguably, you know, there's a few other proof of works out there that are very good, but Ethereum Classic is where people are gonna go. And you, you know, there's articles everywhere about, you know, comparatives. Now, Ethereum uh, Classic was, uh, created effectively when there was an attack on Ethereum um, and the split occurred in 2016 after a hack. So Ethereum Classic and Ethereum remained identical until very, very recent, until block 
one million nine hundred twenty thousand. So Ethereum versus Ethereum Classic mining. So <clears throat> proof of work miners can go to Ethereum Classic. Stakers go with Ethereum two. Um, and fundamentally, look, there is a there is a monumental distinction. Now this is an article, by the way, from September. So you know, have a look. The Ethereum um, Classic hash rate at the time was eighty nine point one one terahash. So it has gone up about fifty percent in terms of the miners. Mining power has increased monumentally into towards Ethereum Classic. Because remember, September fifteenth, eighty nine point one one terahash across the week. You know. Now we're looking at 144.78 terahash. That's huge, huge, huge difference. What do Ethereum proof of work actually have? Look, nothing. Nothing is here. There is nothing. You can get started, you can click, and you can start going through stuff. But fundamentally, look, they're just running through the overall how you, how you mine and everything else. But there is nothing here to make me think this is going to be a beast. There's nothing here to suggest that this is going to fly in price. Because <clears throat> who's going to come here? You just got to think of it logically from a developer perspective. Developer is more, far more likely to go to Ethereum Classic than Ethereum Proof of Work because Ethereum Classic has established it. It's been around for six years. Ethereum Proof of Work, you know, it's been around for a while. Like it's been around for a couple of months, nothing really special. Um, yeah, Masari believe the Ethereum mining industry is worth an estimated 19 billion, which will become obsolete with the change to proof of stake. Um, as a result, this fork effectively was created. Vitalik Buterin suggests has come out and gone, Look, I don't know why anyone will want to use this. We already have Ethereum Classic, which is a totally fine chain. Um, however, obviously, there's miners that have come to Ethereum Proof of Work. You know, then they're not again; they're not doing terribly in terms of mining power. Um, but beyond beyond the miners, some miners moving to Ethereum Proof of Work to try and you know benefit from the the GPUs, the, the enormous money they've spent on mining rigs and the GPUs. There's nothing here. There's nothing here. Um, the Ethereum community fears the fork in the entire chain, including all dApps and liquidity on it, will give uh, way to front runners and MEV, exploiting the little value left on Ethereum proof of work at the time of the merge. Um, we saw all. We saw a lot of this play out with a huge dump on Ethereum proof of work. The fundamental reality is: look, this isn't. However, whoever wants to claim Ethereum Proof of Work is the original Ethereum. It's obviously not Ethereum Classic is the original Ethereum. And I just don't see developers rushing or flocking to Ethereum Proof of Work. I think miners will. I think you'll get a lot of traders that will like the volatility around this. But beyond it, no. No one's even listing it. You know, you've got Poloniex and Gate and MEXC and Femax. You've got a few, a few places here and there. This isn't on Binance, this isn't on KuCoin, this isn't on Huobi, this isn't on anything. Oh, it is on KuCoin, though. Um, you know, Kraken, fair play. Um, but a lot of smaller exchanges. Crypto.com, fairly big, obviously. Kraken's pretty good. KuCoin's pretty good. But generally, you know, we're not looking at huge uh, exchanges here. We're not certainly not looking at the biggest volume right now as well as only like 9.6 million for a 400 million market cap coin i think this still can dive down quite low i would not be surprised if this ends up below a dollar um yeah just don't don't have high expectations or high hopes for this uh the only upside for it i suppose is the fully diluted market cap is you know every coin is out so there is a positive, I guess. Uh, or every, well, not every coin is out. Obviously, it's continually mined. But why would you go there? It doesn't make sense. Why would you go there instead of just going to Ethereum Classic if you are a developer or if you want to use a proof of work chain? You just wouldn't go to one that's only been up and running for a month or a couple of months when there's one that's been up and running for six years and it's the exact code, exact same code. 
just doesn't make sense. Um, but that's my take. It's just my two uh, cents. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Like the video, hit the bell notification, and subscribe to the channel, particularly if you're a returning viewer, trying to get that percentage down. The reason for that is it benefits the channel massively. It means I can get big guests on, I can get pro founders of projects or founders of projects on. Um, so hit the subscribe button, it helps the channel immensely. Um, and guys, if you want to see the coins I own, go to uh, copymycrypto.com. I share my entire portfolio on that site. Every coin I buy and sell, you can literally copy along if you, and if you want to. Yeah, I release daily videos talking about the markets as well, if that interests you, or if you just want to copy the investments I'm making, you can do that. I've been deep diving these markets for the past eight years. I'm always looking for good, significant crypto get gainers, effectively, like I said with Phantom. When I find the next Phantom, the next coin I think can do those massive, that massive, massive run, I'm going to go onto the site and tell the members, not do some Udemy course. So if you want to get in early and make the massive gains on those big, big movers, and go read the site. And remember, everything on the site is verifiable because it's all on the YouTube history. Um, guys, last thing. Ripple. Ripple are considering a deal for all FTX assets. Uh, Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO of Ripple, said the company would be interested in companies owned by FTX that serve business customers. So it's not necessarily that they want all the crypto of FTX, but they want all the assets, the businesses that... the uh, that serve other businesses. Um, the Ripple CEO said that during the call between um, himself and SBF, the two discussed if there were FTX-owned businesses that Ripple would want to own. Part of my conversation was if he needs liquidity, maybe there's businesses that he has bought or that he or he has that we would want to own. Uh, would we have bought some of those from him? I definitely think that was on the table. I'm not saying we won't look at these things. I'm sure we will, but it's a harder path to transact. Um, some subsidiaries not included in the proceedings include Crypto Clearinghouse, Ledger X, FTX Digital Markets, FTX Australia, PTY, and payment processor FTX Express Pay. Um, and Garlinghouse has come out and said, look, he'd be interested in buying the parts uh, that served business customers. And that's a big thing. Like, F... Um, Ripple are, look, are very, very, very well positioned for a CBDC. Um, they are already, you know, they've been spoken about in papers released by, I believe, is either Goldman Sachs or um, Morgan Stanley. I can't remember which one. They released a paper talking about the, the better payment processes out there that would reduce the massive banking fees. Um, and, you know, Ripple Net was really spoken about very, very highly. So any uh, company that they can buy that can really do well to serve businesses would bode really well for Ripple moving forward as they continue their huge surge in uh, development, well, in development and in growth. You know, they've been buying up assets left, right and centre. Um, this obviously long term bodes really, really well for Ripple and XRP. In terms of uh, FTX, obviously they're, they've circled the drains for a while, particularly in, since the bankruptcy. And, you know, there's going to be investigations into SBF a lot because of his conduct. Um, we're in very, very interesting times, guys. But if you're an XRP holder, it's probably very good news for you. Um, and that's it from me. Take it easy. Bye-bye.